Great. Okay. Well, most of you probably think that I live right down the street on B Street, but actually I live online. I spend anywhere from 8 to 12 hours a day totally immersed in Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, Google+, Plus, in apps like Foursquare, Gowalla, Yelp, all these different places, blogs and websites. That's where I live. I live online. And the interesting thing about it is that people have started to visually show what the internet looks like. And this is an example of one of the ways that they're visualizing it. Every time you buy a book on Amazon.com or send an email, you're a part of this type of ecosystem. And this is where I live and this is where I work. So it's a pretty cool looking place, yes? Now, to keep everything humming in my world, I need to spend all this time in that space. And um, what I've noticed is that being a part of a group of people that are constantly on that leading edge looking for new things and new technologies uh, to help businesses and to, and to help individuals. I've noticed something very interesting about women and how they work online. And what we're going to do right here is we're going to show a little bit of a video of a dynamic example of women. And we're going to go right here. Mm -hmm. Now, what you're seeing here is very interesting. It's called a G Plus Stream Visualizer, and it was created by Justin Ormond. This visualizer takes five hours of posts and comments and likes on Google Plus and condensed it into four minutes. And each of those little flower-looking objects is a single post that someone has made. Each dot in the flower is a comment on the post. And the frilly white dots around the flower is the author replying back to a comment. So the flowers with many white and blue dots around them are from people who are highly interactive with their community that they're building around their post. And the bare flowers are from people who don't post, they post, but they don't comment back to the people. So there's no community being developed there. So this is a really cool visualization. And you can see in the middle where it starts and everybody moves out and everybody's commenting. And a lot of these are women creating communities around, around posts. And right, it's a little bit hard, but you can see their faces in their little thumbnails here. And it's just an amazing process to see community being built around thoughts. So what I've noticed that will women build communities. That's what they do. That's what they do online, is they're building communities. But they build them in three different ways that I have found. And the first way is called the journey leader. The second way is called the community engineer. And the third way is called the teacher networker. So I'm going to start with the journey engineer, excuse me, with the journey leader. And the interesting thing is that you might have noticed social networks can change very quickly in how they function and how they look. They can change weekly, they can change daily, and sometimes in the case of Facebook, they can change hourly. It's almost every time you go on, something's in a different place or the font size is different or something's going on. And there's always a great need for someone to navigate those changes and then report them back to her community. And they need to understand how everything works so that they can tell everyone else behind her how to navigate those changes. But also by doing that, always staying at the lead and being to pull the community onward like that. And this is what I call the journey leader. And they've built community around them because people trust them. There's a tremendous amount of trust in what they say and what they do. Journey leaders are always out front, they understand the changes, they investigate, they figure it out, and then they bring it back to their followers. The journey leader also feels very deeply for the community that they're developing, and they're genuinely very happy whenever someone in their community masters some skill or learns some way of doing something that makes them very, very happy. And they'll say so enthusiastically, 
publicly. I'm so glad you got it, Ginny. Two thumbs up. There's a very high five kind of enthusiastic response with journey leaders to her community. It's a very interesting thing also about journey leaders is they're very transparent about their wins and their losses. So if they mess up or they do something wrong or they've given some bad advice, they're very clear and open about that. And they, that's what sort of earns them the respect of the community and also makes for really diehard fans. Journey uh, leaders tend to give their opinion on new social technologies. It, almost like a protective mother would. They might say, okay, go to G+, but you might want to think about not leaving Facebook behind. Or, you know, this, this particular uh, social media marketing tool is great, but this one isn't. Don't, don't play with that. So they're very protective that way and try to give everyone uh, a big um, uh, opinion about what to do next. Now, a perfect example of a journey leader is Mari Smith. And it's Mari like Ferrari, like she's very fond of saying. <clears throat> Mari is an amazing woman. She, you can look at her numbers. First of all, she has close to 130,000 followers on Twitter. She has close to 57,000 connections on her Facebook business page. She has 50,000 subscribers on her personal Facebook account. And now, subscribers are different from friends, but that's, that's a whole other talk about that. And there are 40,000 people who have Mari in a G Plus circle. And if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. G Plus is a new social platform where you can organize people into circles. And 40,000 people have already put Mari into that, and it's a fairly new social environment. And she's also considered to be the top uh, woman keynote speaker for all things social media. And she's gained those numbers and respect by being jovial, supportive, uh, and a positive, and a perfect journey leader. And here are two classic posts that show her to be this. I'll give you a second to read them. And she can do this all day long, supporting, thanking, giving information, um, saying when something's good, being fair when something's not. And so I think she's a perfect example of a journey leader. The next type of woman I find online and how they build community is the community engineer. Now, for a large social platform like Twitter, Okay, um, you have to sort of imagine, let's say, you're in a huge mall, and instead of people, it's all Legos. Okay, it's just Lego people walking around. Now, there's potential for connection with almost everyone in there, but basically everybody's just walking around, just like missing the connection and not, not connecting. And that, that really explains Twitter really, really well. All these people just broadcasting, but no connection. A community engineer has a special gift of being able to find someone over here and someone over here and putting them together. And they build communities by finding those pieces and building, much like you would if you were stuck in a pile of Legos. Like this would be pretty awesome, actually. You could be there for hours putting things together. And this is how a community engineer looks at people potentials. And what community engineers do is they build communities, not just one community, but different, several different types of communities. And they always have a plan in mind when they're building. So if they're talking to you and supporting you, they have a plan in mind. So you need to get together with this person so that you can build something together. That's how they're looking at social networks. And there's uh, a wonderful example of this, and her name is Dabney Port. And Dabney Port is an amazing woman. She has actually close to 27,000 followers on Twitter, but because she's nurtured all these incredible relationships, uh, her reach is in the hundreds of millions of people on Twitter. And I was recently uh, privy to be a uh, guest expert on her program called Social Media Manners Twitter Chat. 
And if you don't know what a chitter, uh, Twitter chat is, don't worry. It's, it's, it's like a real-time chat on Twitter with hundreds of people all talking to each other with 140 characters. <laughs> and it's the most exciting thing that I do. It is so much fun, um, but it's not for the weak of heart because it, the stream will go by very, very quickly and there are hundreds of people adding to a conversation. And I was, um, and, and it's really an amazing thing, but I was actually more amazed at her skill in gathering an audience before the event. I watched as she used Twitter to nudge and remind and inspire and recommend the upcoming Twitter chat to specific people on Twitter for hours beforehand. So that by the time we actually got to the event, there was this huge buzz about it. And it was really quite amazing. And I talked for, uh, about an hour on Facebook, and it was probably the most wild, crazy thing I've done in a long time. It was really a lot of fun. And during that time, you can see from this graph here that there were 11.3 um, million impressions, and there were just hundreds and hundreds of tweets and retweets and, and things, and it was just an amazing event. It got a lot of buzz. And one of the best qualities about that community engineer who's bringing people together is their follow-up. They are masters at the follow-up process. They do that to solidify the connections because they are trying to build something that stays together. And so if you know someone who is really, really good at follow-up, they're probably a community engineer building type. Now, she has also built a Twitter community around film openings. And I participated in that Twitter chat, which drew over 9 million impressions, 300 original tweets, 275 retweets, and 100 mentions. And that's actually really impressive for Twitter. It was really awesome. The third type is called the teacher networker. Now, the teacher networker has, it seems as if they have a really deep, dharmic desire to teach. But they're teaching to bring people up to a shared competency. They're not bringing people to lead them. They're bringing them up to share in a peer-to-peer -peer network. And they freely give tutorials and white papers and how-tos and, you know, anything that they, um, the teacher, uh, the student needs, this teacher networker will provide for them. And they're always sending them to blogs to find, you know, incredible how-tos and how to do things. But teacher networkers generally only work within their own niche. They don't build separate communities like a community builder would. They very much prefer a very deep, one, simple community as opposed to several different types of communities. And like I said, the uh, teacher networker teaches a student to become the teacher so that they can have a community of peers. And they do that so that they can network to build better business with people. So we actually have someone in our community who's an excellent example of uh, a teacher networker, and that's local businesswoman Ellen Finkelstein. Now, many of you might think you know Ellen, um, but here's some amazing things that she's built. Did you know that she has 74 hardcover, softcover, and Kindle books on Amazon.com where she is either the author, the co-author, or the editor and with all the various editions dating all the way back to 1995. 74 titles on her author page. She's an MVP, which is a Microsoft Most Valued Professional in the field of PowerPoint. And that there are only 33 MVPs for PowerPoint in the entire world, and she's one of them. She has twice successfully created, marketed, and produced a webinar series on PowerPoint um, and presentation skills, attracting a professional audience of over 5,000 people, and she's done that twice within the last year. She's also grown her email list to over 10,000 people. So she's an amazing, an amazing person, and the interesting thing about this is she has done this by being a wonderful teacher networker, especially on LinkedIn. Uh, she started a LinkedIn group a little over a year ago around the subject of PowerPoint 
called Great Communicators, Effective Presenting in PowerPoint, that currently has close to 1,800 very active members from all over the world. And she educates this audience, this group of people, so that she can create that community of peers to network with. And LinkedIn actually is a perfect site for a teacher networker like Ellen. So let's go over these one more time to see if you see the distinctions between them. Um, the first is the journey leader the one who's always scouting ahead and figuring things out to teach the community that she's built and reporting back so that she pulls everyone, but she's always going to be in the lead. The second is the community engineer that's actively seeking connections to build and solidifying the connections to build more business. And then the third one is the teacher networker who freely gives information in order to create peers so that they can network together. So those are the three types of communities that are being built by women online currently. So women absolutely build communities, even if it's just community around a single idea or post, or community around a subject like PowerPoint. Did, I, I don't know if, if you saw your own style in those three examples. Um, I think some people are really very clearly one or another, and then some people have a little bit of each one. But the three examples of Mari and Daphne and Ellen, I think are really clear indications that there are ways to build very profitable, very satisfying communities online. So, I thank you very much, and I'll see you on the internet.